Well, as you can see, we have a different planter in the shop here. This is a 12 row planter that we bought from my uncle last year. This is gonna be the first year that we have used it. We ended up selling that six row planter. We also bought the tractor that he used on this corn planter, which hadn't been unhooked for seven or eight years when we bought it here this past summer. Um, that was the first time it had been unhooked from the planter. So that's a 8220, that's what we're gonna use this year on this planter as well. Uh, this is set up a little bit different, but it's kind of the same as the 16 row. It's got the central commodity seed delivery system on it, which instead of having individual hoppers, it's got two seed tanks on there. I don't know how much they hold, 30 to 40 bushel, I'm guessing, a piece. We can actually run two different varieties, I think, on this one. Actually, no. I don't think that's true. I think this side does, yeah. This side does this side of the planter, and the other side does uh, the other side. I was thinking for a minute that we could run two uh, different varieties. But at any rate, uh, this planter does not need much work compared to, well, our 16 row planter didn't need much either, but it was time consuming doing them bearings up front and replacing the fertilizer discs and whatever. This one, all we're really gonna do is a couple of things to it. It's got that wavy disc no-till coulter that we're gonna replace, they're wore out. So we're gonna replace those. I ordered closing wheels for it. We're gonna replace the closing wheels with a Schaefer Mohawk closing wheel. Um, this doesn't have the inferral tank on the back of the planter. It has it up on the front of the tractor. And that's gonna be running a um, starter fertilizer or pop-up through the seed firmers. This has Keaton seed firmers on it. The 16 row planter has uh, Schaefer rebounders, I think they're called. It actually has a Y, um, a y tip on it to where it's dropping liquid on either side of the seed. Another thing that we're gonna do is we're going to replace the fuel pump or we're gonna put a new fuel pump in this tank I bought a generic fuel pump. Uh, I bought three of them from Amazon and they all cracked. They all cracked right on the top of the pump, right where you come out of it with either the hose or in this case, we're gonna be hooking up a gauge. I've got a different style gauge here. So we'll come up off of this with a 90. Uh, no, we're gonna come up out of this with maybe a six inch and then we've got to have enough room to put our gauge on here like that. And then run the 90 off of the top of a six inch piece, which looks like we're gonna to have to do a little pipe thread in here. So this is a fill right pump. It was probably $200 more than them generic pumps that I, that I bought. But like I was saying, they all cracked right here on the top. It was about, the material on the top of those pumps were maybe a half, again, as thick as what this uh, fill right pump is. I know you get what you pay for, but at the same time, um, and well, in the last video, I was talking about name brand stuff, and um, we had bought an Evolution saw. That only lasted a little bit, and I had to send that back for uh, warranty work, so it's, it's uh, not, not only does the cheap stuff fail on you, but the other name brand stuff does as well. Uh, one thing that this pump did not come with, it did not come with a wire harness, but I've already got one on the truck, and it didn't come with the draw tube, nor did it come with this gauge here. I bought this gauge separate. Uh, I think I got this gauge on uh, Amazon, I bought the pumps on uh, eBay. I imagine you could buy these pumps different. You could probably buy it with a filled draw tube. Um, 
I didn't see a spot where you could buy them with the gauge. Now, on those blue cheap pumps, the hose that was furnished with those pumps, which this pump was not furnished with a, with a hose, they were pipe thread, but it looked like a garden hose at the top. And it had an O-ring on there, and I think if you plumb them direct with the fuel hose going right to the top of those pumps and used the rubber O-ring to seal uh, your threads, I don't think they would have cracked. But being that we ran a, a pipe down in there and had to have it tight so that the gauge wouldn't move all over the place, it caused too much stress and torque on the top, and it cracked it. Well, we have our pump installed onto the tank. I've got the wires hooked up. I'm not too happy that they didn't get the sticker on there straight, but maybe we can pull that off in there and get it to straighten out a little bit. But I'm running into a little bit of a problem with this meter. I just put the elbow into it and I happened to notice, notice that it says total liters. So I was assuming that I was buying a standard gallon meter because that's what the description said on Amazon. And that's what it says right here. It says uh, uh, 5 to 20 GPM transfer gallon meter. So this should accept a pump that puts out anywhere from 5 to 20 gallons a minute. However, this says total liters. So it looks like we might be doing a little bit of math and uh, dividing by or multiplying by 3.76 or 78. Um, maybe it reads gallons up here and liters down here. I don't know. But at any rate, uh, I better save the box for this. I won't know what it's exactly all about until I get running some product through it. Now this knob wants to naturally fall off, so we're going to have to probably glue that on. Again, we're getting what we pay for, I guess. This was like 50 or $60. I only bought two of them. Um, I better save the box because it looks like we're going to maybe be returning it. Well, we've got this pump all hooked up. I just took the truck up to our storage, our fuel storage tank, and I filled it about half full. Not quite, but it's, a, it's got a fair amount of fuel in it. And we're going to go ahead and see if that gauge as in liters or gallons. So I've got a five gallon pail here. We'll fill it up a majority of the way, see what we get for a gallon reading. And then we can just pour the fuel right back into uh, the tank. I did order another uh, gauge. I ordered two of those. And I, what I wanted to do is put one on our actual storage tank because that does not have a gallon reader on it and the whole reason for having a gallon reader is just so that we can get an idea how much fuel we have left in the tank if somebody needs it for a skid steer or something like that when we're picking stones and planting corn every once in a while we have a skid steer that can't make it the whole day and maybe they're closer to this truck than the truck they brought with them for that day now we have I don't know, seven, eight, nine of these tanks set up in various vehicles. My brother's got one in his truck. I've got one in my green Chevy. This truck here, my father's got a tank uh, in his pickup. We've got a fuel tank in the black truck, another fuel tank in the white uh, farm truck. Uh, the 300 gallon tank that's on the, um, that black trailer. Why do we not have a Thunder Creek trailer? Well, it really doesn't make any sense for us to have something like that because it would require one person to go around to each piece of equipment and uh, 
fuel stuff up, you'd either be waiting for him to get there or when he does, when that person does get there to fill up with fuel, you've got two guys waiting for fuel to pump into whatever tractor you're filling. This way, if we take our own fuel with us, we can be filling up with corn. We can be running a grease gun around uh, the piece of equipment, what have you. You can kind of kill two birds with one stone. Uh, we did get a Thunder Creek trailer offered to us at a discounted price, but um, at this point we just didn't see a, a real purpose in uh, purchasing one of them yet. Someday, maybe down the road, we will. Now I ended up putting some diesel fuel stickers on this tank just to kind of identify what's in the actual tank itself. Now I had somebody comment a while ago here that, hey, you painted that tank the wrong color. It's supposed to be green. Oh, okay, so the dispensary tank that you put fuel in is supposed to be green. Why are uh, plastic five gallon fuel jugs yellow? Uh, diesel fuel five gallon jugs yellow. Gas jugs are red, kerosene's blue. Um, the tanks do not have to be green. Uh, you buy them, they're white. Uh, this one I painted black. The Thunder Creek trailers, and there's several other companies that make them trailers too. They make them gray, they make them blue, red, black, what have you. So with that being said, that's, uh, I think you got things mixed up there a little bit. So uh, let's go ahead and try this pump out, make sure we don't have any leaks. I don't see any fuel in the bed of the truck yet, so that tells you the tank is not leaking. But we'll make sure the fittings don't leak and then we'll see what we have for a gallon reading here. Well, that ain't too accurate at all. I've got maybe four and three quarters gallons in that five gallon bucket. Uh, it says 1.5 on the, uh, 1.5 on the top part of the gauge which is this we can reset that and it says 2.3 or something so maybe it had some air in the system that it has to work out so let's go ahead and empty this pail into the tank and try it again
Well, our results weren't any better that time than the time before. Right now, I've got about the same amount of fuel, maybe. Now it's reading 1.2, and I reset it to zero. And what are we here? We are, I don't know, I can't tell if that's 3.8 or 2.8. So these uh, <laughs> gauges aren't worth the crap. So we're gonna have to get this off of there. I did glue this reset knob on there so that that wasn't falling off. This was like $60. Um, now if you were able to buy fuel off of what this gauge said, uh, if you were the buyer, you'd be making out pretty good because it's only reading about a fourth. It's, it's actually opposite. If it was reading liters, uh, it's reading a, a fourth. Well, gallon-wise, it's, it's, it's only reading about a fourth of what it should be. Um, yeah, so it is what it is. So we'll have to get the appropriate gauge for that. We'll get the fuel dump back in the tank. And with that being said, that is gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching and we will catch you at the next one, which you can about imagine what that's gonna all be about. So take it easy, folks. Talk to you later.